Good morning. So today we are going to discuss our next topic which is all about solving quadratic equation. But first, let's recall the first two methods we discuss on solving the quadratic equation. The first one is factoring. When we say factoring, it is the process of finding the factors. So let me give you an example. Let's say we have an example of or expression of x squared minus 5x plus 6. So this is a kind of a quadratic equation since we have the highest power of 2 with our variable x. So how are we going to use factoring in solving this equation? So to solve this equation using factoring, we need to find the factors of this equation. So the first thing that we need to do is to find the factors of 6. What are the factors of 6? Let's say we have 6 times 1. Another one is 2 times 3. Or even vice versa. So 6 times 1 is, that is equal to 6. 2 times 3 that is equal to 6 also. So let us first factor out x squared. What is the factor of x squared? That is x times x. Now, we will decide if what factor of 6 are we going to use. Is that 6 times 1 or 2 times 3? But in considering the factor of 6 or the constant term, we need to consider the middle term. We have negative 5. So by that, we need to multiply or we need to find the factors of 6 and when we add, it should be equal to the middle term. So let's say 6 times 1. When we multiply 6 and 1, the answer is 6. But when we add 6 and 1, the answer is, is that 5? Of course not, because 6 plus 1 is 7. So it means that 2 and 3 would be our roots or factors for 6. But how about the sign? How are we going to consider the sign of the given factor? We need to look at the sign of the middle term. It is negative. So it means if it, if it is negative and the last term is positive, it means we have the same sign. And we will consider the negative. Just copy negative, 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 and write 2 times 3. And we will equate it to 0. So equating to 0, we have x or the quantity x minus 2 times the quantity x minus 3 equals to 0. So finding the roots, we both equate it to 0. x minus 2 equals 0. Then the next one is x minus 3 that is equal to 0. Next, what's the next process? We have this what we call addition property of equality. Or in Filipino terms, in Philippines, we use the what we call uh, transpose. We transpose the constant term to the other side, or the, the, side, the side of the equal sign. So we have that is x equals 2. It means positive. Why? Because from the left side of the, of the equal sign, when we transpose it to the other side, it will become positive. It will change the sign, the opposite sign. So our first root is 2. How about the next one? The same. x equals positive 3 and that would be our second root so it means that using factoring we can find the roots of a quadratic equation the value of b is negative 10 so the next price we need to divide it by 2 so negative 10 let me do it here negative 10 divided by 2 so that is equal to what? That is equal to negative 5. So we need to square you know, negative 5. Squaring negative 5, that would give us an answer of positive 25. So it means that positive 25 would be the number that we will add with the both sides of the equation. So adding 25 with the left and the right side, we have the equation of this x squared minus 10x 
plus 25 equals negative 15. Then, since we add 25 with the left side of the equation, we need also to add 25 with the right side of the equation. So that is plus 25. Now, after that, we need to simplify. Simplify the answer. So simplifying, we have x squared minus 10x plus 25. Then we will now subtract since they are unlike sign. So negative 15 plus 25, that is positive 10. Positive 10, since 25 minus 15 is 10, why we copy the sign of positive? Because 25 is higher than 15. So, let's now further simplify po. Ano? So, we have x squared minus 10x plus 25. We need to factor this. So, how do we factor? Just find the factor of, or square root of 25. So, that is x, we copy the sign of the middle term, minus 5 squared is equal to 10. So we have now x minus 5 squared is equal to 10. So we have now this equation. We have the factored form of the perfect square trinomial and the simplified form of the constant term. So what's next? The next step is to square both sides since we need to find the roots of the quadratic equation. So to Finally, do it, we need to square both sides. Squaring this and the right side of the equation. Next. So since we have squared of, square of a binomial and we have square root, we can cancel this out. So after canceling that out, we oh, what's left? We have x minus 5 as our equation on the left side. How about on the right side? Is 10 a perfect square? Of course, not. So, we need to just copy 10. Square root of 10. Simplifying. So, to remove the constant term, we will now combine like terms. Constant to constant. And those who um, that has a variable on the other side. So, let's do that. X equals let's transpose or addition property of equality will become 5 from negative will become positive plus or minus square root of 10 plus remember that when we are dealing with square root it is always two signs it is always positive and negative so therefore when we are squaring a number the answer is always two it is positive number and a negative Number. So, what are now the roots of our quadratic equation? The roots are, the first one, we will use the positive. So, that will be x is equal to 5 plus square root of 10. And the next one, this is x sub 1. For x sub 2, we have 5 minus, as you can see, we use the minus sign, square root of so this would be the two factors of the quadratic equation that I gave a while ago. Okay, how about if we can solve the roots or the solutions of the given quadratic equation using factoring and completing the square? So we have now the next method which, will be, which we will discuss today, the quadratic formula or solving quadratic equation using the quadratic formula which is the easiest method or easiest method compared with the first two methods that we discussed. So let's now discuss what is quadratic formula. When we say quadratic formula, it is a general form in solving the equation ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, where a is not equal to zero and given that the quadratic formula is this. We have negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So this would be equal to x. So that is the quadratic formula that we will use for the entire discussion this day. 
Okay, let's do another example. So, suppose we have this equation. x squared minus 4x is equal to 5. Let's now identify the values of a, b, and c. So what do you think is the value of a? The value of a is the coefficient of x squared, we have 1. How about b? It is the coefficient of x, very good, we have negative 4. And what how about the value of c? The value of c, do you think it is positive 5 or negative 5? The answer is negative 5. Why do you think negative 5? Because if we are going to do this, again, before identifying the values of A, B, and C, we need to transform or convert first the equation into its general equation. So, converting this, it will become x squared minus 4x. We transpose 5, so from positive it will become negative. Negative 5 is equal to 0. So what do you think now is the value of C? The value of C or the constant term is we have negative 5. So remember, when we are dealing or identifying the different variables or the A, B, and C, you need first to convert or transform it to its original or general equation. So let's now use quadratic formula in solving quadratic equation. Let's do this example number one. We have 8x squared plus 2x minus 55 is equal to 0. So we will now use quadratic formula in solving for the roots of this equation. So again, what is the quadratic formula? We have negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So again, this is the values of x. Let's now identify first the values of a, b, and c for this given general or quadratic equation. a b and we have c so what do you think is the value of a the value of a is positive 8 how about b b is positive 2 and c it is negative 55 let's now substitute the given values to the quadratic formula we have so substituting, we have negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared minus 4 times a. What is a? That is 8 times what is c? That's equal to 55, negative 55 over 2 times 8. So that would be our substitution. Okay, what's next? So the next step is to simplify the given quadratic formula or the substitute quadratic formula. So we have now negative 2. Simplify na po. Let's simplify. We have negative 2 plus or minus square root of this uh, 2 squared is 4 minus or let's simplify first. Negative 4 times 8. That is negative 32. Negative 32 times negative 55. That is positive. So from negative, it will become positive. 1760. You can check using your calculator. Then afterwards, let's do the denominator. 2 times 8. That is 16. Next. Let's further simplify. So we have here negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 1760 plus 4, obviously that is 1760 
4 over 16. Okay, so let's now proceed with the lowest term, if there is. So we have here negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 1764 over 16. Let's get the lowest term, or the square root of 1764. So you can use your calculator to check it. So 1764 has the square root of 42. So that is negative 2 plus or minus, sorry, what is the square root of 1,700? Now let's do some example. Let's do this example number one. Let's say we have an equation of 3x squared minus 4x plus 5 is equal to 0. Let us identify first the values of a, b, and c. What is a? What is B and what is C? In this equation, we can see that A is always the coefficient of the highest degree, which is 2. So here, what is the value of A? Obviously, it is positive 3. Next, how about the value of B? The value of B is always beside or the coefficient of the variable x with the highest degree of 1. So here, what is the value of b? As you can see, we have negative 4. And last, what is the value of c? The c is the constant term. So constant term here is not 0, but we have 5 as our constant term. So we can now have these three variables or values of three variables, then we can substitute it directly to the general formula or the quadratic formula. Let us now proceed with the second example. Suppose we have x squared plus 10x equals 11. Observe it. As you can see, this is not in the standard or general equation. How can we solve using the quadratic formula? The first thing that we need to do is to transform it into its general form or equation. So transforming it, we have x squared plus 10x. The 11, as uh, the number 11 should be in the left hand or left side of the equal sign. So we need to transpose it for the addition property of equality. So that is negative 11 is equal to 0. Okay, so since it's already in this general equation, we will now, we can now identify the values of A, B, and C. What do you think is the value of A, the value of B, and the value of C? So the value of A here is the coefficient of x squared. This is 1. How about B? Coefficient of x, that is 10. And C is the constant term, we have negative 11. So we can now use this 3 variables or values of three variables to solve for the quadratic formula. So what's quadratic formula again? We have negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Let's substitute the values of a, b, and c. b is 10, so we have negative 10 plus or minus the square root of what is b that is 10 squared minus 4 times 1 as our a and c is negative 11 over 2 times 1 what's next we need now to simplify the given equation so let's simplify Let's now simplify. We will now copy negative 10. So equals negative 10 plus or minus the square root of, what is the square, um, square root of 10? 10 times 10, that is 100. Then, we need to simplify this. Negative 4 times 1, that is negative 4. 
negative 4 times negative 11, that is positive 44. Over 2 times 1, that is 2. Next, we need to simplify it further. Negative 10, just copy. Negative 10 plus or minus one for 100 times a plus 44. That is 144. So square root of 144 over 2. Now let's do the operation. We have negative 10 plus or minus. What is the square root of 144? That is 12. 12 times 12 over 2. So let's now solve for the two roots of the given quadratic equation. Okay, so let's now solve for the two roots of a quadratic equation. We have x sub 1 and we have x sub 2. So we will use positive and negative 12. For the first equation or roots, we use positive. So that is negative 10 plus 12 all over 2. For the second equation, we have negative 10 minus 12 over 2. Next, simplify. We have negative 10 plus 12, unlike sign, so we need to subtract. Copy the sign of the highest number. The highest number is 12, so 12, positive, 12 minus 10 is 2, over 2. Then simplify 2 divided by 2 is 1. So our x, or the first root, is positive 1. And how about the next one? We need to simplify, negative 10 minus 12, that is both negative. It means we need to add. Negative, just copy the negative sign. Negative 10 plus negative 12, that is negative 22 over 2. Let's divide. Negative 22 divided by 2, unlike sign. When we are dealing with division or multiplication, when unlike sign, we need 2. The answer is negative. So that is negative 22 divided by 2, that is 11. So that is x sub so these two roots, these are the two roots of the quadratic equation that is given. Okay, so we are now done with quadratic formula. We're solving quadratic equation with the use of quadratic formula. We will now proceed with the use of solving the discriminant of a quadratic equation. So how do we determine the discriminant of a quadratic equation? Remember, that in quadratic formula, we have the equation negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. The radicand, which is this one, is what we call this trinomial. So, with the use of discriminant, we can find how many solutions does a quadratic equation has? Okay. So how do we determine the discriminant of a quadratic equation? So given that this is our discriminant, when we solve for the discriminant of a quadratic equation, okay, so we have three important rules that we need to consider in solving for the discriminant of a quadratic equation. What are those? So, when the value of the discriminant is positive, it means that we have two real solutions. And when the value of the discriminant is zero, it means that we have one real solution. And when the value of the discriminant is negative, that means that we have two complex but not real solutions. Okay.
Okay, so let's look at some examples on how discriminant applies in quadratic equation. So let's say for um suppose we have this equation x squared minus 8x plus 16 is equal to 0. So how do we use or apply the uh, discriminant? So let's say the formula for discriminant is d. d stands for discriminant equals d squared minus 4ac. We will just identify the values of a, b, and c the same with solving for the quadratic formula. So let's identify first. What is the value of a? What is the value of b and c? The value of a here is the const i is the coefficient of the x squared. So we have one. The same with the b negative eight x or negative eight rather. And for letter c, we have sixteen. So let's now substitute the given values. Substituting, we have negative 8 for b, negative 8 squared minus 4 times 1, and our c is 16. Simplify. Negative 8 times negative 8, neg both negative, so it, be it becomes positive. So it is 64 minus negative 4 times 1 that is negative 4 multiplied by 16 that is negative 64 64 minus 64 that is totally 0 from this from the value of the discriminant we can conclude that the quadratic this quadratic equation has one real solution Therefore, the equation has one real solution. It means that we can get one real solution. A while ago, we solved that the value of the discriminant of this quadratic equation is zero and we concluded that it has one real solution so now let us prove to see if that is true so given that this quadratic equation we need to identify first the value of abc because we are going to solve this using quadratic formula so what's the value of a we have one b is negative eight and c is equal to 16. So all of these are our are very important values. So let's now use the quadratic formula. Again, we have negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That is over 2a. Let's do the substitution. We have negative 8. So negative times negative 8 plus or minus the square root of what is b? Again, negative 8 squared minus 4 times 1, the value of a, and the value of c is 16. And that is over 2 times 1. Oh. Okay, so now we need now to simplify the given equation. So simplifying, we have this equation. Negative times negative 8, that would be positive 8 plus or minus the square root of negative 8 times negative 8 or negative 8 squared that is probably positive 64 minus negative 4 times 1 that is negative 4 times 16 that is negative 64 over 2 times 1 that is 2 let's proceed let's further simplify Let's simplify first what is inside the quadratic or the radical sign, which is the radical. 64 times 64, or minus 64 rather, that is 0. So we have here 8 plus or minus the square root of 0 over 2. Simplifying it further, we can say that 8 plus or minus 0 over 2. 
or that would be 8 over 2 that is equal to 4. Positive 4. So our root or the roots are x equals 4. We have 2 positive 4 as our roots. Let's have another example. Suppose we have x squared minus 4x minus 1 is equal to 0. Again, we need to identify a discriminant. So we need to identify first the values of a, b, c. a is equal to 1. b is equal to, that is negative 4. And our c is equal to negative 1. Next, we need to write the formula of the discriminant. We have b squared, or the d is equal to b squared minus 4 a c or 4 times a times c let's substitute the value of b is negative 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 1 let's simplify negative 4 squared or negative 4 times negative 4 we have positive 16 then this one negative 4 times 1 that is negative 4 times negative 1, that is positive 4. Perform the operation, we have 16 plus 4, we have 20 as our value of the discriminant. Since the value of the discriminant is positive, we can conclude that this equation has two real solutions. So the, this equation, the equation, has two real solutions. So to check, you can try it using quadratic formula if you can really get two real solutions.